Then uh, John, the uh, the gang is all here. You have a member of the public on as well. All right, then uh, we'll call the meeting to order. First, let me say that this is a virtual meeting of the Marinwood Community Service Di District Park and Recreation Commission pursuant to executive order N-29-20 issued by the governor of the state of California. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member of the public can participate telephonically or via internet by utilizing the web link or dial-in information printed on the agenda. At points in the meeting, when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. Okay, uh, first item is the uh, adoption of our agenda. I did notice uh, one typo there on uh, item number five. Uh, the date still listed as 2020. Uh. That's all right. So uh, with that correction, uh, does the commission wish to make any other changes in the order in which we go through our agenda? Looks good. If Motion not, then, I'm sorry, Ann, I didn't catch that. Should No, it looks good. Uh, yep. Motion to adopt. Second. Okay, all, all in favor? Aye. So, uh, We'll move on. Uh, item number two is the uh, introduction of our newly appointed Park and Recreation Commissioner, and also the introduction of our appointed board liaison from the uh, to the commission. Uh, welcome, Ian, and welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if uh, the commissioners want to introduce themselves to them or. Sure. I yeah. Okay. Um, John, you can start. Yeah. yeah. My name is John Campo. I um, live in Marin Wood for about eight years, um, and I work for uh, Marin County Parks. Um, and so my office at the Civic Center. And I've been working there for about four years. So I and um, similar to John Toon, I, I have a background in park management. I used to work in San Francisco managing parks for close to twenty years, and so. I've been on this commission, I don't know, maybe four or five years or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's good. And I'm glad to have more, more folks join us. So welcome. I think it was January 2016, you were originally appointed, John. Okay. Nan? Hey, so great to meet you guys. Welcome, Ian, and welcome, Lisa. Um, yeah, so I'm... My, my day job, right now I'm, a, I'm at home with my kids. I'm a mom. I live around the corner from the community center. Both my kids are in elementary school and we've lived here for a while. They went through the, um, the preschool and have used a lot of the recreation programs at the community center. So we're just enthusiastic about all things um, Marinwood. We love it here. And um, prior to that, I was a um, pharmaceutical project manager so and program manager um, before we moved up here a number of years ago. So um, I guess cross-functional teams and cross-functional operations is kind of my background. But uh, great to meet you guys and, and just echoing what John said, great to have uh, another commissioner. And uh, my name is John Toon. I've, geez, I've lived in the neighborhood, it'll be uh, 30 years now. Long time, uh, my career was in public works and parks. I retired from the city of San Rafael as their uh, park superintendent, city arborist, uh, about 10 years ago. And then, uh, if then uh, Ian, can you yeah. introduce um, yourself to us? Yeah, of course. I'm, uh, I'm Ian Fine. I grew up in Marinwood um, and, uh, let's see, lived on Rhinestone, Blackstone, and Windstone at various times. Um, we now, we moved back to the neighborhood with our elementary school kids um, a few years ago now. We live on Queenstone. Um, and, um, you know, use the open space all the time, use the, the recreation facilities down at the community center all the time. 
and um, you know, just wanted to to be a resource and help give back um, in whatever way I could. Well, welcome. We appreciate it. And, and Lisa, do you uh, thank you for joining our board of directors. We appreciate that. And if you could uh, just introduce yourself a little to us. Happy to, happy to, Lisa Ruggieri. Um, I'm really happy to, to be here and to be able to give back to this community. Um, I also um, am, am from the area. I actually grew up in Novato, <laughs> and then um, I I lived in um, Upper Lucas Valley for about 12 years now. Um, I have two young kids, one in elementary school, one, one second grader, and then one in um, in preschool. And we've certainly used the all of the Marinwood facilities. And we love the park. We love the camps and just all of the community programs. So I'm really excited to be um, a liaison to, to, to this um, commission and um, to be able to give back. So it's great to meet all of you. All right, uh, I guess I might ask if there's any public comment regarding these introductions. Sure, one second. Good evening, uh, this is Stephen Nessel. Uh, pleased to see you, Ian. As a member of the public, I don't rate for uh, photographs. I don't, I'm not quite sure why that is, but, uh, but uh, hopefully we'll meet in person someday. Um, uh, just a quick note, I did have a, uh, I, you did overlook me f uh, for comments on the agenda. I had a question. Um, for the last couple of meetings, there was a promise that there be a discussion on improving uh, safety and access to our parks at the uh, western ex uh, entrance for uh, the quiet wood drive. Um, this is something that uh, 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 that Ann brought up a couple months ago in the meeting, and I don't see it there. We didn't have it last month. Um, maybe the manager has something to say about that. Does Eric? Do you have anything to say about that? Are you? Was it an oversight or? Uh, were you not planning to do no, it? No, the topic's in Luke's report, Stephen. I, I thought you were going to have a discussion. Well, it can be discussed in that context or in that portion of the meeting. It's uh, detailed in Luke's uh, Park and Rec Maintenance Report. So there's no discussion. Um, okay, uh, well, that that's all I have to say. Um, just uh, for Ian's sake, uh, I was a former member of the Park and Recreation Commission. I live on Quietwood Drive as well, uh, right up the street from Ann. I love the park. My dedication is to the parks and the open space. I'm also an active swimmer. Um, I love the par park and, and our open space, and I think it's a great underutilized resource. My dream, my vision is uh, to see uh, us maintain our open space with a little bit greater care and to provide access to all people. I'm particularly interested and concerned about access for our senior community and people with limited mobility. There's uh, dangerous areas in the park that need to be addressed and hopefully um, you know, serving on this board, uh, I hope you'll agree with me that we can do a better job. I also hope um, that uh, that each one of these, uh, one of you on the Park and Recreation Commission, as well as the the board, actually reach out to the community. It's it's very disappointing. I've um, had a very frustrating. Uh, uh, communication with our staff regarding some of these issues. I've sent a couple letters, which I'm guessing that you never received, um, regarding uh, park improvements. Uh, it seems to go deaf, and I, and when we go on deaf ears, and when we bring it up um, in the past, it's not been welcome. Don't know why that is, um, because after all. 
isn't that why we're all here to to make our community a better place so um, that's all I have to say so does that uh, include your public comment on non agenda items Stephen we'll move to that we'll move to that one next John well then that's what I'll call for now is public comment on non agenda items great Sorry, I guess I was a little long-winded there uh, earlier on. Um, you know, uh, Ian, I, I don't know. I, I, the public seems to have a, uh, a bad reputation. I'm not quite sure why that is. I think the reason, in my view, is the closed nature of the board and uh, a lot of the projects. It seems to be that um there's this lack of dedication to the the project of Marinwood and it the uh it seems like you know what what gets done is uh limited in scope and it doesn't really it's it doesn't necessarily reflect um what the community wants i don't know if any of you have uh contact information up on the uh, website I think you should I do don't believe that it serves the public interest to have uh, communication funneled through the manager managerial staff and you don't get uh, feedback from the public and what it does is just creates a closed loop uh, a closed government if you will and um, I think the value of community, the value of government is people working together, people communicating. So, um, you know, uh, I guess my, my point is, is that, you know, we have a great opportunity uh, to grow. Um, our parks have seen more use in 2020 than I've, I remember in, my, in the 12 years or so that I've lived in Marinwood, um, and I think as more more people are, you know, discovering mountain biking and hiking and everything else, we really have a great opportunity to make Marinwood a very very special place. So that's all I have to say. With that, we'll move on to item number four. This is the draft minutes of our November, November 24th Park and Recreation Commi uh, Commission meeting. I'm sure you've had a chance to review those minutes. Is there any uh, comment from the commission? Motion to approve. Okay, uh, do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion by Campo, second by Jossum. Uh, I guess Ian doesn't vote I mean, on that. Yeah, I'll just abstain. And then, uh, so other than that, uh, we're approved. For the record, just when this comes up, Ian is technically allowed to vote, but he is also allowed to abstain. Uh, the reason for him being allowed to vote is like you take a situation like with the board of directors that just took on three new directors. If all three new directors abstained, those minutes could never be approved. Uh, but in this case, we have three commissioners, so you're okay. Uh, um, but uh, you don't have to abstain, uh, Ian. You can always uh, rely on the uh, everybody else to tell you that the minutes are accurate. I guess I should also ask for public comment on our uh, draft minute approval. Maybe a little late, but. You look okay there. Go ahead and move on, uh, John. All right, we'll move on to item number five, the draft minutes of the January 12th, 2021 board meeting. Any uh, questions or comments from the commission? I'm curious on um, item B, if there was a discussion on trail access. On which item? D. Um, 
No, there wasn't a discussion, just uh, suggested improvements. There's generally not discussion that stems from public comment. It was the same, uh, same topic. Okay. Any other comments from the commission? Okay, then we will move on to item number public two. Comment. Oh, excuse me. A public comment from item number five, the board meeting. Indeed, there was discussion uh, on improvements to trail access. It's actually, um, it's it's actually uh, the same issue as far as handicap access. Uh, well, I, I don't want to say handicap, just making it more accessible w for people with limited mobility. Um, one of the comments, um, I, I did appreciate uh, your comments several months ago, John, regarding um, the access and noting how easy it is to improve um, that that slope there so people that you know have mobility uh, issues can get up the slope one of the things you did say is gosh I I, I never hear the public talk about that uh, or, or something to that effect I, I don't want to put words in your mouth but um, uh, this is kind of an example of where you're not getting enough information um, the uh, the agenda does not indicate uh, what the discussion entailed uh, or the issues and um, you know you I, I actually think you should be able to read this and and understand what the issues uh, discussed were and I will say this it was about a 15 minute discussion um, I have it on tape and be happy to share it with you so um, maybe Eric remembers it differently than I do but um, um, you know the issue is still out there we've been discussing this for literally years and for some reason um, this is never prioritized or even discussed or even answered and I don't know why that is um, we can uh, get this accomplished other ways um, and I Quite frankly, I think we're at that point um, where, you know, people are going to have to make improvements so their neighbors don't fall down the slope. I, uh, you know, I'd rather rather our our uh, maintenance staff do it. Uh, I'd rather our uh, uh, managers take this this uh, challenge seriously. But um, you're we're really left without. Uh, an option if you won't address the safety issue. All right, Stephen, anything else pertaining to the board meeting and not your other issues? Thank you. Uh, we now move on to item number six. Uh, hopefully you've had the time to review uh, the manager's staff report regarding uh, the Proposition 68 per capita funding grant, uh, identification of potential qualifying capital projects. Uh, I don't know, Eric, if you want to add anything to the report you've submitted to us? Well, sure. I, I don't know if add's the right word, and I'm certainly not going to read it out loud. This is a, a good opportunity for the district. It's a significant amount of funding for an agency our size. Um, that we've already qualified for and have gone through all of the initial steps to be able to uh, utilize this funding. Um, the next step in this, uh, and just to be clear as I'm looking at it, um, total funding available to the district for this project is 177,952. That the district owes a 20% match to the total project costs, not 20% of funding, but 20% of project costs. So it's actually 25% of funding, if you look at it that way, um, to bring a minimum, uh, if we used all of the funding, you'd be looking at a project of approximately $222,000, um, which would be a district uh, funding of 44,000 and change. Um, this funding, some of the key things to understand about this, and it gets a little uh, 
tricky. This is for capital uh, acquisition and new capital projects. This is not for maintenance of existing capital. Um, you know, like if we were just to say, use this to repair the playgrounds or repair the pool shell um, are not qualifying options for this. Uh, if we wanted to build a new pool, uh, something like that would qualify. Um, uh, and it distinctly calls out, as you can see in this report, um, you know, staff have certainly talked about this and looked at what some of our long-term needs are and some that are more uh, uh, pressing than others and uh, replacing the play structures in the main Marinwood playground um, is about as high on the list, I think, as it gets in terms of sheer usage, uh, community involvement, age of the structure. Um, Luke certainly spends more time. Luke is our certified playground inspector. Um, and so he can certainly kind of chime into our concerns with the equipment. Um, it's aging. Often we need to replace parts. Finding those parts is getting to be next to impossible. And replacing a playground is not a cheap endeavor. It is not something that we have currently budgeted, uh, although it is certainly on our radar as something that needs to be done. And I could easily see us uh, utilizing all of this funding and then some to be able to, if we wanted to replace both structures within the playground. And then also, if funding allows um, either, you know, through other grants, other opportunities, other, uh, uh, other means, also looking at potentially replacing the play structures in the Las Colinas uh, mini park as well. The reason we could get away with that is you're only allowed to do this at one project location per project. Um, the Las Colinas mini park is the exact same parcel as the Marinwood Park. This parcel extends all the way from Miller Creek and uh, Lucas Valley Road and wraps all the way around in a big dog leg until it gets to the mini park on Las Galinas. Uh, so it's one singular parcel which would qualify as one location. So if uh, depending on what, where the funding comes in and what else uh, we might be able to contribute towards it uh, and, and raise or grant fund for, uh, it would be nice to look at all three of those options. That is staff, uh, heavy recommendation at this point in time due to the cost of the expense, the uh, frequency of use of the area, as well as uh, the sense of urgency on replacing the equipment. Um, that said, I certainly want to entertain any other ideas that might be out there in terms of eligible uh, capital projects. Uh, again, these cannot be projects that are already planned and budgeted. Uh, this has to be additional projects. Um, so that's kind of a key thing to keep in mind. This funding is meant to supplement, not supplant. Okay, I, I personally think this is a great opportunity to do just that and hopefully uh, we can move forward. Any other uh, comments from the commission? A bunch of questions that maybe I could just put out there. Um, to Luke and Eric to give some more details. Um, if, if it wasn't the playground structure that was the top priority, what would be the runner up? Did you want me to, I could just go through all the questions at once and then you could respond or one at a time, whatever you prefer. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me, Luke. Do you have a preference? Uh, no, uh, you, you can lay it out. Maybe some of them will go together in any Yeah, so. yeah, okay. So yeah, like if it wasn't the play structure, what would be a runner-up project? Like what what other projects percolate to the top of the priority list for you? Um, how old are the structures that, that we're talking about replacing and then what are the expected lifespans of those structures? Um, what would be the target ages for the replacement structures? Would they be the same? Would they be, I think, I don't remember, is it five to 12 that maybe those, that's like the target range? And would we, would we repeat that? Um, it, Eric, you kind of answered one of my questions. What was the cost? It sounds like it would absorb most of that 177, if not all, and then some. Um, would would the project replace just the structure or would it also um, maybe look at the fencing and the hardscaping around the structure or any of that? Um, and then finally, if, if the 
project that percolated to the top was a play structure. I'm curious if there were thoughts on like designs or styles or whatnot that you've entertained. That was it. Um, thanks, John. Uh, Eric, I can start if you want to chime in. You Great. Know, I'm just um, kind of writing them all down to make sure we hit them all. Um, yeah, for sure. I was doing the same thing. Uh, those are good questions, John. Um, this, uh, the playground is definitely the one sort of at the, the forefront and the timing of this uh, funding opportunity has come, is coincided with um, some repairs that, that we've had to make on the playground and some um, problems we have run into sourcing parts and realizing that uh, things are harder and harder to come by. So all of that kind of converged in a, in a way this, that made it seem, um, you know, an extra obvious that this would be a, a really good use of these, of these funds to, to use towards the playground. Um, but uh, Eric mentioned putting in a new pool. And while that's uh, not necessarily something we're planning to do, um, we have been throwing around the idea of how we can update or put in a new uh, tot pool. The small, the little kitty pool is something that's been on our radar for a while in terms of yeah. how we could, um, you know, make that, uh, make improvements to that area. And, uh, but be, beyond that, you know, this is just the start of, of this conversation um, as far as, as far as our list of things, that would be something that um, we would definitely need to, you know, I don't have an order. Um, there's lots of things that, that could be used, uh, use some improvement or, replacement um in marinwood uh, Eric, i remember we talked about the top pool i was curious if that was on the list but it in my opinion yeah the playground seemed like a higher priority and just um as far as the the immediate uh need i think that that one rises a little bit higher in terms of it's going to be really hard for us to um make some some repairs in in, in the near future uh, as far as we, we've lost some some sources of part replacement and we're still looking for things we don't have anything in, immediately that we have to to, to deal with was we, we thankfully we've had some stuff on hand but moving forward it's yeah it was getting harder to find things so um it the timing is really um is, is good for this as far as the the age uh the playgrounds were built in the i believe eric it's in the, in the uh early 2000s I yeah think it's it was like, in the report it was 2002 2002 oh yeah you do put it in here um and as far as like uh the the expected lifespan um i think that has as is variable depending on use and our playgrounds uh do get very heavy use i uh, just because of uh, the nature of the community and also because of the number of, of large programs that we run so um I, I don't think we can say for sure that there was a guaranteed lifespan or, or an expect expectation necessarily but we do have a lot of wear and tear due to um how big our our programs are that, that utilize those those structures um I think our playgrounds have lasted uh, very well and we've done a good job to keep them up, but um, they're, they're sort of planned to, to become obsolete. And uh, there's a reason that the parts aren't made anymore. And you have to find these manufacturers that make them custom and it gets very expensive to uh, have them custom build certain parts of our playground and then ship them. They're all very heavy. So uh, I think that's, that's all sort of built into the, to the situation. Um, but yeah, we're running up, you know, getting on, on to 20 years, um, which is, which is pretty good for, for a playground, um, in my estimation, uh, as far as, um, what, what we'd want to do with the structures, there's so many different uh, things out there and there's been, there's such a range of equipment available, um, and such a range of, of cost associated with those and what types of age groups you can serve. And so the, we haven't dialed that down and, and said, this is what we want. Um, we begin to look through um, different options and possibilities, um, but we're at the very, very early stages of that. And I'd say our goal would be to um, still offer play equipment for the age groups that we're currently doing and making sure that we're, we're accommodating as, as wide of an age range as we can of, of kids are using our, our, our playgrounds. Um, and right now the main playground in our main park uh, has two separate, play structures and you, as most of you know um then one is one's for a little bit older kids and one's for younger and we'd want to definitely make sure that we're accommodating a, a range there with anything new that we get um replacing a full playground is uh it's gonna be pretty costly if we're going to redoing the the ground redoing the fencing the landscaping the layout um all of that would would be um i think a, a pr I, I, with what what's available to us through this this grant opportunity um i think we would 
be best served to just take out the existing structures and put something new in their place. I think we would uh, not be able to get very far if we tried to do something above and beyond that in terms of changing the scope, the, the whole setup and the, and the infrastructure of the playgrounds themselves. I, I don't know if that answers all your questions. I'm trying to hit all those, but. Yeah, no, I think you did. I, I, I do like the idea. I'm, I'm uh, just thinking about it a little bit and, if, if it was determined that this was where the money was going to go, um, I would put out a couple of places to check out. Um, Stafford Lake Park, which, you know, is one of the places I work for, we're in County Parks. They, we recently uh, renovated that playground and it's got a kind of an adventure theme with bare logs and there's a zip line there. I'm not sure if you've seen that. I think it's interesting how playgrounds have evolved you know, from when we were kids with the splintery wood and the tires to, you know, they've just changed so much. And the one at Mountain Lake, um, uh, Stafford Lake, is kind of like a newest evolution of that, which is kind of neat. And then the other one that is is really cool um, in San Francisco, Mountain Lake Park, just on the other side of the bridge, um, that's also, that's a little more, that's probably above our budget but it's just a neat one to go look at for some ideas if you're interested. And if you, if you like what you see at Stafford, I could put you into um, contact with some of the folks that worked on the, the planning of that. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, yeah, we're, I mean, there's such a range out there and we get all the catalogs and I'm through, through my, uh, recent, you know, last year getting the, the certified playground inspector certification, I'm suddenly on a thousand uh, mailing lists and uh, I get nonstop uh, solicitation for all the latest and greatest. And so it's been, it's been fun to start looking at that with an eye towards, hey, what, what could we actually do? Um, not just, uh, oh, that would be nice, you know. So I uh, appreciate the recommendations. Definitely we'll follow up on that um, for sure. With the, um, it seems like a good idea to me to, to, to look at replacing the playground. Um, would the commission review some of the potential designs before we settled on something? I think that would be great. I think that would be, that would definitely be our goal. Yeah, I would love to. It's so funny with playgrounds. I remember my kids are little, there's some playgrounds that I've seen that look really great, but there's not much to play on. They're really static, right? They're like, they're, they're just, they're more like objects and the kids kind of walk up to them and go like what what am i supposed to do with that and then they don't play with it so we have such great monkey bars that's the one thing so i know my kids have loved the monkey bars at Merwood park and i know that is kind of a little bit of a thing of the past those complex monkey bars so um there's a great playground um in mission bay in san francisco uh so john if you're ever uh, um, driving through that area that's a really really good one to check out it's huge and it um you know i think that the age range on that is even broader probably than the, the current facility that we have now it has like a two-story slide um, it's got incredible monkey bars um, and taught stuff and everything so that's another another really good one to look at the one in mission bay i think it's called the mission bay children's center i can i can look it up and, and tell you more exactly Anything else from the commission? Mission Bay Kids Park, that's what it's called. And I will ask for uh, any John, comments. Before you, before you go forward there, I want to, uh, a couple things. Um, uh, to Luke's point, yeah, you know, that's just, I, I would just to explain the process because the way that this funding works, this is state funding. Um, we're looking to, you know, right now get some thought provoking from the commission and from uh, any members of the public that are in this meeting. What I would do next is take this to the board um, with a, a kind of consensus from the commission that, uh, uh, you know, supporting the idea of pursuing using this funding towards replacing the play structures. Um, to Luke's point, there's a bajillion different types of you know as everybody knows there's a lot of different types of play structures uh once we got approved for the you know once we filed for this funding and we're officially on the list uh, much like luke when he went through the playground inspector uh, i've been getting hit with all sorts of playground people who found my contact through this process um, the the spending threshold here is going to trigger a a formal bidding process 
So it's going to be a little interesting to see how that works because if we, you know, kind of move to a very specific type of playground or even a specific type of design, that might greatly limit uh, the potential vendors and bidders who could bid on this. So I'm kind of curious to see how this goes. Last time the district um, did something like this was when Lucas Valley Estates was developed and had the, uh, you know, put out an RFP for the playground that is out at Creekside Park um, in that area. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how this goes, especially since all of these, you know, a lot of these different playgrounds, why they might be similar, you know, the more we fine tune things of what you want in a playground, the more that's going to eliminate a lot of potential bidders and or vendors, which isn't necessarily a bad thing outside of that kind of sense of competition. Um, but also keeping in mind that all of those vendors know exactly how much funding is being put out there through this specific grant. So I would be uh, surprised if bids don't come in right at around that exact number, uh, regardless of the scope of playground. Um, so that's a bit of the process, get the board to adopt moving forward to spend this funding on that. And then from there, we would certainly look into, you know, I would like the board from that point, personally, my recommendation would be to send this back to the commission so that the commission, um, through the use of these public meetings, can start vetting you know, potential styles and potential designs um, and leave it at that. I don't necessarily think that's a, uh, a task for the board of directors to take, but I think it's an excellent uh, way to utilize you know, the viewpoints, opinions, and expertise of the Park and Rec Commission. Um, so that's kind of how I would see this going. Uh, and moving in that direction. Obviously, Lisa uh, will be attending the meeting. She'll have, you know, an ear for the board uh, and avoid, you know, and be able to uh, not necessarily speak on the board's behalf, but kind of represent that as well. So writing this down, if this is the direction we move, I will probably find a way to get this on the very next agenda. Uh, public works and projects like this take a lot of time. Uh, even though I put the timeline in here that says, you know, we have until December of 2023 to complete the project. Um, that goes real quick. So, and it takes a while to get through various RFP processes and any other uh, uh, things we might need to worry about um, in terms of these projects. So uh, that's a little bit of where that is at. And, and then two other playgrounds I would recommend that I know are highly popular. Um, there's the one Memorial Park in Simo. Uh, my kids call it the dinosaur park. Um, it's more of a traditional type playground, but my kids love it. And then there's a playground in Napa. Uh, it's actually um, right next to Harvest Middle School near the outlet malls. It's called Playground Fant Fantastico. That was actually a really neat story and a fully volunteer uh, funded and built. And uh, not that I'm suggesting we go that way, but it's certainly a, a model to look at. Um, just in terms of how they got that done, too, because it's really kind of a community parish thing out there as well. So just putting those uh, two very popular playgrounds out there. Hey, Eric, I have a question. Um, is this, in your eyes, do you, and Luke, do you guys see this as purchasing the playground and our staff installing it, or the whole thing would be, you know, installed by the, the vendor? I think uh, this would be a vendor installed situation um, just with the nature of uh, these things. It's, I mean, it depends on what it is exactly, but um, some of the stuff is um, very, very part specific and, and unique and not something that just is like a universal, um, something that our staff would necessarily know exactly what to do or be certified to do it. So um, just off the top of my head, I think that'd be something that we would have a professional ins installer put that in. But Eric, let me know if you No, I 100% I agree with Luke. I think our staff can do and build and uh, fix and repair a lot of things. Um, I don't know that I would have them piece together a, a full play, you know, a full size play structure like what I think we're envisioning at these parks. I think that goes a little bit beyond our scope, not to mention we've only got three people and uh, they've got overflowing plates of responsibilities and tasks as it is and this would completely rip them away from a lot of things um, that said i do think once these are in um, and we kind of have a revisioning of it our staff is very capable and has done very good jobs in the past 
to some of the points you made earlier, John, on looking at some of the landscaping or some of how the surrounding area is laid out or the fencing or uh, other attributes to the, you know, we've built sandboxes. They've redesigned that whole hill where the tree used to be and created a nice little trail through there and moved over some other areas. So I think that's where our staff will get involved and that actually could potentially be a source of a match uh, towards the total funding too, because force account labor certainly, uh, it's not just a monetary match, you know, it's also a in kind and force account labor match as well. Got it, yep. Okay, thank you. All right, sorry, John, I didn't mean to. No, that, that's fine, I, I should have checked with you first. Um, any public comment regarding the Prop 68 uh, funding grant? Yeah, one second. Yeah, I, I love the comments, um, uh, John and Ann, uh, regarding the playground. And I am familiar with that uh, Mission uh, Bay uh, Children's Park. I, I love that park. It's beautiful. It's sculptural. It's fun to sit in, and the kids seem to really enjoy it. I, I'm not familiar with Stafford Lake, but uh, assuming from your comments, John, that's also a very great example. I would like um, the commission to look at this as an opportunity to uh, place a, uh, a piece of, well, I, I don't want to go too far, a piece of sculpture, something, something uh, landmark, something that says Marinwood. Um, and I, I do think it would be nice if we could do something special. That doesn't necessarily mean expensive. But it should be cool. It should be something fun, and it should be something pretty to look at. And if we do that, you know, what's what's the message we send? We send that we care for our children. We care for our quality of life here. And I think it would, I think it would really make a positive impact on our community. Just like the entrance signs, uh, the Marinwood entrance signs make a statement. Um, it, it makes us a special place. Um, as far as specific structures, of course, there's a great range of what we can choose. I would prefer that uh, something other than a, you know, off the box, uh, off the shelf uh, solution is, is chosen. I know there are lots of beautiful, beautiful nature pra uh, playgrounds that are created. Um, and I, I'm sure each of you know some examples. Uh, I've seen plenty of examples, and I'd love to see something like that. Um, it would kind of integrate into our parks, and also I, I'm guessing that if it's built correctly, it would be easier to install and maybe even less in cost than a... a, a a standard, uh, you know, uh, school ground uh, uh, swing set. So I, I honestly I don't know, but but uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is this is an opportunity to to really make an impact on our community. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Um, we'll move on to item number seven, the Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. Hello, Mr. Fretlow. Hello, thank you, John. Um, <clears throat> well, we didn't meet last month, so um, I'll just kind of catch everybody up. Um, in December, we did, uh, the recreation staff ran a winter break camp, which we usually do during the, the winter school break, the last two weeks of December. And um, it, our camp, went very well. We were able to serve uh, over 20 local families uh, with childcare those two weeks and uh, brought, brought in staff that were home for their, um, their winter breaks and high school and college age staff. Um, we're happy we were able to do that. A lot of uh, other local recreation departments and, and uh, agencies um, were a little hesitant to, to run a camp with, with the way that uh, the COVID-19 cases were looking. But um, after running summer camp successfully and, and having all of um, our protocols uh, in place, we've, we felt confident we could run a safe uh, camp following all the guidelines. 
and uh, we're happy to be able to provide that um, that service to the to our local families. So that was um, that went really smoothly, and, and we're happy to have been able to do that. And we're planning similar camps for uh, midwinter break coming up in February and spring break coming up in April. Um, so we're looking forward to being able to to, to do that in spite of some of the um, guide the the restrictions and challenges that are that are still in place. Um, our letters to Santa program um, was was really fun success, and uh, our kids were able to come and drop off letters to to be um, forwarded to the North Pole uh, to Santa. And uh, I think we had um, just over seventy letters uh, written. And um, big thanks to our our secretary, uh, Santa's secretary Carolyn, uh, who helped uh, uh, get all those letters uh, to Santa. So that was um, some of our fun winter activities that um, we would have talked about last month. Uh, right now, uh, the recreation staff, uh, while we're offering, um, we have our preschool program going on right now that, that just started um, in the beginning of the month and uh, in, a, in its traditional form with, with our, with our uh, two different classes, uh, which is going very well, uh, as well as our after school program that's taking place in the afternoons. Um, we are in full on summer, spring and summer planning mode, trying to um, put together our, our schedule of, of camps, uh, what our pool programs are gonna look like uh, this spring and summer, and what other activities and events we'll, we may be able to offer. Um, and it's been a big, it's been a big challenge. Uh, there's still so many unknowns about what we're going to be allowed to do, how big our groups are gonna be able to be, how many weeks we're gonna be able to run with the same group um, or, or how few weeks, I guess, would be the, the restriction. And um, so there's, there's still a lot of things that we're not sure about. Um, right now, we are operating along uh, the, the current guidelines for all of that stuff and figuring out what's the most we can do, what can we offer, and um, how many different groups can we serve with our uh, with our facilities and our programs. And um, we hope to have our catalog of, of spring and summer programs uh, sort of not published per se, but finalized uh, on the web and be able to distribute um, by mid uh, February. And, and so um, things are coming together and we're feeling really good about, um, about our plan so far. We are definitely planning on op operating a, a, summer, a summer, summer camp program again uh, this summer. Uh, it'll probably look a lot like our program last summer, unless um, the guidelines get uh, loosened and we're able to to accommodate more kids. But um, we, you might remember, we did have the the biggest summer camp program in in Marin County, uh, summer day camp program last summer, and uh, we we're really happy to be able to do that safely and successfully. So we are um, moving forward with plans to to do that and um and it's coming together we're planning on having the pool open um on our normal start date uh, this year which would be the uh, beginning of april or end of march and um, we are excited to be able to offer more in line with our normal programs uh this season including lap swim swim lessons uh recreation swim in a limited capacity and uh, the details of that are still being worked out, but we'll be announcing all of that by mid next month and um, getting all of the information out to our community. So um, that's been a challenge and our staff have been hard at work talking to other agencies, looking at what um, everyone else is doing, looking at what the, the current um, advice from the health officer and the health department and, and just all of that information and putting it together and trying to plan just the best summer we can offer while um, keeping our, our participants and our staff and everybody safe. Uh, as safe as possible and making sure that we're we're following everything. So that's um, a big a big chunk of our time right now is just putting all of that together and then we'll get it out and start um, getting people signed up. So uh, Luke, do we know the status of the water devils swim season? Um, we don't. The water devils are um, I think still waiting on um, to hear from the Marin Swim League exactly what the nature of, of the season is going to look like from that official standpoint. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to run a, a normal swim league or a swim season with, with competitions or if it's going to be, you know, virtual competitions where the swim teams all swim at home, but they compare times with another team or do something like that. There's a lot of different options on the table that we've discussed with the swim team. And we're trying to work with them to say, you know, if they're able to do a, this is what we'll be able to, you know, accommodate and, and help them out with. If it's B, it's this. If it's C, it's this. So um, I think they're going to, they're hoping to have 
um, to know what they're allowed to do or what the plan is with the other swim teams by the beginning of February or, you know, next week or two. And then we'll, um, you know, kind of finalize the practice schedule, however that's able to look. So I have a feeling it's going to be um, limited in terms of um, how many kids can, can be here at the same time. I don't think traditional swim meets are probably going to take place uh, where you have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people in the facility. I just can't see that happening. So um, it'll be a scaled back version, um, but I'm not, I'm not sure what the details are yet. We're just, we're waiting to see, and then we're going to try to work with the swim team to accommodate that. Are there any, are there any other recreation uh, questions? I, I was about to move on to parks maintenance, but does anyone else have anything before I do that? And, you know, if anyone from the public wants to talk about recreation, we can do that at the, at the end of my report. Um, on the parks maintenance uh, side, as you know, it's we've got a big storm going on as we speak, and the staff have been uh, preparing for, for a, a big rain, um, doing their normal uh, checks of all the different culverts and V ditches and drains, making sure things are clear, um, making sure the, the creek is clear of, of uh, dam hazards and, uh, I'm hoping that everything's just flowing smoothly and easily and we don't have any backups or stoppages. So we've gone through through all of that and then we'll be, we'll be monitoring very closely as um, as the rings go on this week and next week and just to address any problems that come up. Um, the generally, we end up with big tree limbs coming down uh, and getting um, stuck in the in the openings and, and then a lot of stuff getting piled up. So it's a matter of going out there and removing blockages as we see them and, and trying to prevent anything from overflowing. Um, but with staff are good about every every morning going out and monitoring all of that and um, making and taking any action that's needed. We also have the big sand pile out in the parking lot for residents to come and uh, take sandbags to help shore up their backyards and garages and, and try to uh, pr protect against flooding. And we'll continue to provide uh, sand and bags throughout the rainy season um, as best we can. Um, as of right now, things are are... Uh, looking pretty clear and looking pretty good so um, we'll just this week we'll, tomorrow we'll be telling we'll see what the status is and, and take care of things as needed uh steven in his comment mentioned the the marinwood signs um at the at the entrances to the community the the big wooden uh lovely signs that um uh that we've had for i don't remember how long how long those are um those been in place but we uh, have updated the landscaping on both of those in, in recent weeks, uh, adding some, some plantings and, and cleaning the area up a little bit. And um, they, look, they look a lot nicer and we'll be maintaining that. Um, we have a little bit of touch up to do on one of the signs still. Um, they do get tagged once in a while and we have to remove graffiti and, and do a little bit, bit of touch up here and there. But um, we're working on that. We're happy to have um, them a little spruced up and a little bit of a nicer um, entrance to the community there. Uh, I, I don't, I guess this was in December, so we didn't have a meeting, um, but the, the big bay tree um, by the, uh, I'm pointing, you guys know where I'm pointing, but the Fireman's Hill up next to the fire station as you're turning from Lucas Valley onto Miller Creek Road, that large bay tree did fall down on New Year's Eve or the night before and um, thankfully didn't take out any telephone wires and didn't didn't cause any damage didn't land in the street and um, so we're very grateful that, that the way it fell was was the the best way it could have um and we got that all taken care of that weekend we got it all cleaned up and i think they just ground up the stump today uh, and we are currently um planning what we're going to do with the area we're going to um, do some re-landscaping and and change it up um, so staff are working on that plan and We'll be uh, transforming that area um, and uh, visually um, dealing with the with the lack of that tree in the in the coming months. So um, you guys can keep an eye out for that. Um, we already talked a lot about the playgrounds and uh, the repairs, but well, the main thing we we had to deal with last month was two uh, platforms um, on the main playground were becoming cracked and uh, just were worn out on the ends. And we were thankfully we had replacements on hand and were able to take care of that. But those are what's one piece of equipment that our, um, our playground parts supplier no longer uh, has a source for. And so um, if we have to replace another one, we, we are out of luck until we can find um, another company that can do that. And um, that's becoming the case with some of the, some of the specialized parts of the playground. And uh, we're just grateful we actually had some of the parts on hand from a previous purchase, but um, moving into the future, it's, it's, it is getting harder and harder to find this stuff and more and more expensive um, as we're having to find companies that are willing to um, fabricate some of these parts from, from scratch uh, that, that 
don't have molds and don't have equipment ready to do that. So uh, that is, it's been a little tricky, but we were able to get the repairs made that we needed to, thankfully. Um, uh, and then some of you may notice we've, we've been doing some updates to the mini park um, that just we've had some of those holes in the hedges that, that have been talked about um, in this commission uh, in the past. And um, we have um, added some plantings just recently. We've tried to um, allow those, those hedges to kind of fill the gaps themselves and, and we, with little success. So we've added some, some new plants there to, to grow in and fill those gaps. It's all fenced off right now. Um, and hopefully the, those will kind of take hold quickly and we'll be able to remove the, the construction fencing that's sort of protecting those new plantings. And add the plantings along the fences or sprucing up the path um, and just making some overall improvements to the area um, and it looks a lot better, so. Um, Look, does that hedge have irrigation? It does, yeah. There's a drip system all along the, the okay. bottom of that, of that hedge, so. Okay. That's, that's how it's watered. Uh, along the uh, fence as well, the uh, the jasmine have a um, drip system along there as well. So, um, and then lastly, uh, which we which has come up already a couple of times in, in this meeting. Um, so, in, in our attempts to to try to make improvements uh, to the accessibility and and um, safety of the the westernmost entrance to the Panhandle from Quietwood Drive, um, our staff are planning to uh, add. Uh, soil and um, compact that to the slope. Um, we want to, our goal is to just reduce the severity of the slope, um, reduce that step down from the, from the concrete down to the, to the dirt, um, even that out and uh, just make that um, a little bit less of a severe transition. Um, and so that, that we've also added signage just letting people know that um, the, the path does get slippery uh, in certain conditions. Uh, so people can be extra cautious as they take that. Um, and we're confident that this, this will be uh, a good approach to improving just the, the, the safety and the accessibility of that area um, uh, at, at this point in time. And so, um, and staff will continue to monitor that area once we've, we've completed that work and, and kept made it stable. We'll continue to be uh, keeping it free of slippery leaves and debris, making sure our um, contractors that, that clean that pathway are not just blowing the leaves and debris onto that slope, but are um, you know, taking that out. So um, we'll definitely be continuing to, to monitor that. And um, uh, oh, and John, I wanted to um, just thank you, John Campo, for um, uh, sending some recommendations for the area. Um, I really appreciate all the time um, that you put into that uh, in terms of um, putting in a retaining wall and, um, and doing some of the grading there. Um, I think it's this, uh, at this time, our, our approach is um, a little bit scaled back from that. Uh, I do really appreciate going out there and making that um, to, to do that. So um, that's the plan. We'll definitely, once the weather improves, we'll be, we'll be uh, making that a priority and, and taking care of that. But as of right now, we did, we did add a sign, um, just letting people know that it does get slippery. Um, I, can I ask before yep. we before we move on from that? Can I ask? Uh, so, how, how how much are we planning on? How much soil are you going to bring in? So, how much are you planning on changing the the grade from what it's like today? Um, that's a good question. I don't have the exact yardage. Uh, we're going to kind of see see how much it takes once we start adding. Um, it'll be a little bit of a gradual process. But uh, there's two m main areas that have a steeper slope. Um, one is at the very top of where the where the yeah. concrete path is, and then one is more towards the bottom. So it'll be a good amount. We're gonna we're gonna put a lot in, and it'll just be along that. Um, if you're walking from Quietwood towards the panhandle um it'll be added to that left the left direction um as you as you transition onto the dirt um going that way is, is the uh is the area that we're going to even out a little bit and um try to make it more gradual so um that's that's the plan as right now did, did you look at maybe putting in you know some like so i don't know if you guys know where this is when i describe it but on Mount Dana Court, which is right off of Mount Lassen, it's right next to the like juvenile hall kind of parky area. There's a tree, a great big tree up there. The kids call it the octopus tree. Anyway, the access to the open space right there, there are like three or four kind of steps and they're big steps. It's not, you know, like a fully accessible situation, but instead of having, you know, a ramp going down, it's just kind of like wood, you know, 
wooden beams and kind of like earthen steps down. Did you look at maybe something like that for that area as we're trying to just, you know, do some, you know, cost effective improvements um, at this point. So did you look at something like that? Well, our um, our goals are just is to is to keep it simple for now, and just um, the the issue being, I think, may, mainly that the area has a change in um, in steepness, and if and that's it's not uniform is is kind of what seems to be the the primary concern is just that it's it's got a a, a couple different um, grade changes. So our goal is to even now and just try to keep things as similar as as they are without adding a lot of um, additional improvements in structure and and uh, things and 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 see if we can you know just improve that the overall walkability of it with with that and just maintaining the fact that it's an earthen slope um, and just making it a little bit more of an even earthen slope so there's lots of different things that have come up in, in our discussions at these meetings and, and lots of different ideas that have been thrown around um, but uh, we're hoping just to, to maintain just sort of what, what we have there with um, making some, some improvements to, to the walkability of it. Um, Eric, would you say that's an accurate ass assessment of what we're talking about with that? Yeah, that's always been kind of my understanding too. And, and you know, really kind of <coughs> soliciting from our park staff on, you know, what they feel A, you know, they, they can do B, um, would also kind of be able to last the longest uh, without, you know, potential other maintenance needs or things along those lines without greatly altering uh, what it is or having to, you know, start to really dig in and, uh, uh, you know, looking into even larger levels of compaction and extraction and uh, moving to that line and having to move a lot of dirt. Bringing in dirt's one thing. Taking dirt out, they always want to know where it's going to go. Um, so I do agree with what Luke said in terms of, you know, this is the, the direction our park staff uh, kind of looked at and kind of came up with and thought that they could certainly, you know, draw out that slope uh, by adding in certain areas as well as drawing it farther out to lessen the grade so that it doesn't stick too far out into the where the trail goes. But they certainly, you know, took a, a few looks at it from a few different angles and felt that they can certainly improve the, the steepness of it. Um, you know, and the other thing uh, that, you know, they wanted to make sure was, uh, you know, they've been for the last couple of years have really been, you know, kind of keeping an eye on it in terms of debris, leaves, uh, things like that, and making sure that it stays clear. Um, we had looked at potentially taking out that tree, but that tree actually serves as a little bit of an erosion control with the root systems that are right there in the middle. So we didn't want to get too much into that either. And I think, you know, to Luke's point, um, you know, we don't have the exact measurements. We feel that, you know, outside of getting the materials and then, you know, the only equipment really we'd be needing to rent would say be a compactor that could really uh, compact it down properly that you know, these, this is something that they can easily accomplish in-house um, and, and be able to keep an eye on and uh, you know, continue to draw it out. You know, as Luke said, if we need to bring in some more dirt and some more material, that's, a, that's an easy endeavor to bring more in and continue to work it and slope it until it feels a, a little less extreme. Which direction does the ramp swing or does it just go straight? So if you're looking, if you're standing at the panhandle, looking up at the Queen, the Quietwood Path, does it swing to the right or the left? It's um, it, it kind of if you're uh, looking at it, it, sort of comes from the uh, the right hand side from the from the panhandle, and then curves left up towards the up towards the Queenstone Path. If that, I don't know if that quite. Um, uh, so it, it, it ramps away from the new maintenance facility. Correct. Yeah. Okay. The current, the current um, most used way that people access that path is, is from the curve away from the new maintenance facility. That's correct. Do you have a, like a target of the grade of the ramp that you're shooting for? Well, um, n not specifically, I mean, in terms of the, the slope, we're, we're mostly looking to just uh, lessen the changes in the current grade. So if you look at the if, overall, there's, I, I don't know exactly what the grade is right now, but it's, it's um, 
fairly consistent except for two spots where it sort of drops. And so we're just trying to fill in so that it maintains more of a consistent grade than what it occurs is where it has a little bit of a, of, of a gap at one point or a little bit of a drop off. So I'd have to measure to see exactly what, what it's at, but um, the goal is just to take what's there and, and take out the uncertainty of, of having it drop suddenly in, in, in one spot, I think is, is our overall um, approach at this point, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm not sure I have the visual on how you do it without a retaining wall. Um, from looking at it, it seemed like you would need one. Uh, maybe you could do it without one, but maybe you could do it and then you realize a few years down the road you, you do need one. I'm not sure. Um, and what, what kind of soil are you thinking of using? Or do you have a thought um, on that? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've thrown out a few ideas and we're still talking about it. Um, and, and there was a couple, couple things, whether we, we bring in some, some crushed rocks, some quarter fine, you know, uh, to, to help compact and, and prevent it from washing out when it, when it's really wet. Um, so we're still looking at that. We haven't, we haven't settled on something, but I'm definitely open to, to recommendations for, for soil type or material um, as we, as we go. Okay. Can I ask two quick questions? Please. Yes. Um, one is, do we know what it looked like historically? Like, did it used to be, like, was, like, has, I'm just wondering if anyone has, I don't know, a picture or a memory of, has it always been like this or did it used to be more gradual or was there not a drop off at the top or? I am, um, uh, from what I understand with our, with our staff who have been here the longest, um, and uh, Marco has been here for um, about 30 years now. Um, he uh, it says it's it's been a it's been a slope. Um, it's been a it's like a little bit of a of a of slope for for the entire time that he's been around. But it's been it way predates him. It's been there longer than any of the development um, that that pathway and that slope. But I'm sure there's been some erosion, some compacting. I'm sure it's changed in some ways over the years gradually. But uh, that the general idea of what what that is is has been consistent um for the most part as far as, as for, for a long time now and then my other question was just whether you guys have um chatted with the like abutting homeowners right there on either side of the path just to at the very least you know just like loop them in in the process um I am not sure if we've had direct conversations with the, I mean, we were in talk, they're around all the time. We talk to them uh, pretty consistently, but about what's going on with that pathway specifically, I'm not sure with what our current approach is, it wouldn't really impact them at all. Um, and it really wouldn't change um, anything about the current situation. So uh, just except making it a little bit more smooth. So I'm, um, I'm not sure what that'd be unless we were making a lot of noise out there. We would definitely let them know what's going on um, before we do any work for sure. If that, if that answers your question. Yeah, I guess it'd be a suggestion. I might not hurt to just give them a heads up and either way, even if it's not going to. Yeah, no, absolutely. I guess the comment I would make is that I think the key is to uh, keep that area free of the leaves and debris. I think that was always the crux of the issue that it, that created a slipperiness or, a, you know, to this uh, area. I think by filling in the, the area as you step off of the sidewalk, so it's just a gentle step down, there is that, is that post right there that can assist anyone in stepping down then you can create a, a somewhat level area there that could either, you know, you could actually push a stroller off and, and set there before you then uh, push it down the gradual slope. I would uh, recommend against bringing the soil up level to the sidewalk because then I think you invite uh, someone on a bicycle to come flying down through the easement and, you know, right off the, right down the slope onto the pathway. I, I don't, I don't think that's uh you know something we want to see and and then by really uh with that gentle step down that's just going to decrease the amount of that uh, slope overall and if you extend the soil off onto the bottom uh, i think it should be um in much better shape than it's ever been in the 30 years i've been here that's always been a, a, just a you know a rough transition the the neighborhood was built and then they came back and built the park and that was that was never meant to be a, 
you know, they were never meant to tie in together really. Uh, and obviously we, um, that, that's not an ADA accessible point. There was no, when the county went around and made improvements to our neighborhood to bring us up to compliance, ADA compliance, you know, if you go out to Quietwood, there is no curb cut, there's no truncated domes, there's no, you know, ADA access from that point. So it's just that I think creating a, a something that is, you know, to, to me, it's not a, a difficult area to walk, but by, you know, leveling off that slope, a gentle slope, I think anyone should be able to walk that. And uh, so I think you're moving in the right direction to start. Thanks, John. Uh, yeah. Any other comments from the commission or staff? Then I'll ask for a public comment on the item.
Okay, anything else on uh, Luke's report? Yeah, John, I think I'd just like to chime in as we just had a chance to digest everything with this, um, this you know, entrance to the, to the path and everything. I mean, if it's possible to do those steps, just living near this thing, that's what I would say. I'm having a hard time visualizing the, the ramp solution um, that, you know, and I don't know how expensive it is and how labor intensive it is to do those kind of steps, but if you want to see what I'm talking about, check out that area on Mount Dana Court. It's pretty rugged, pretty basic looking, like it's, it's not much. Um, but I think something like that would work well in that area. So I guess I would just, I would advocate for that. Um, but I think it's great if that we're going to do something. So if it ends up being the, the ramp, I support that too. And I, and I love that, um, the staff has put together a recommendation. I really appreciate that. Um, so I think that would just be my, uh, my two cents there on the, um, on the wrapping up that discussion. Okay. Anything else? Then we will move on to uh, item number eight. Uh, this is near and dear to my heart. Uh, this is designation of the uh, commission chair and vice chair for 2021. Uh, I think Eric also left us a, a report on that or some information on that. I did, John, and I, uh, I think, you know, you've been in this role um, uh, graciously and uh, very gratefully by all of us uh, for at least a couple of years now um, and have gotten really good at running the meetings and thank you very much. We really appreciate all of that on our end uh, and the fact that you're always there, uh, not that you would go away, but, you know, when uh, we need to talk. I, I know that the bullet list here, when you look at duties of the chairperson, seems like a lot. Um, I, you know, I think John could probably speak to I didn't do that, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not that demanding of a role. I don't think that the, while uh, the chair is, you know, and any commission member is certainly encouraged to participate in board meetings, I don't think that there's an actual expectation uh, on either of the commissions that the chair attends. Um, you know, when certain things come up and the commission has a, uh, uh, an opinion or a consensus opinion, either as a body or as individuals. It's always nice when commissioners show up at board meetings. I think it, uh, rather than, you know, staff trying to speak for the commission, um, it's good for the commission to be able to have a voice, but, you know, really it's not a lot to it. Um, I send, you know, I just use John as the example, but, you know, I send him a draft copy of the agenda, uh, usually at the beginning of the week before, um, at least that's my goal uh, with no later than Wednesday, just to see if he has any other comments, additions, if I'm missing something, uh, um, you know, a lot of times there's no comments. Sometimes John will pick up the phone and give me a call and ask a couple of questions. Uh, but my point being is there's not a ton of uh, additional work that comes along outside of uh, keeping the meetings flowing uh, every fourth Tuesday of the month. Any comments from commissioners? Are you seeking a nomination? Um, I, I don't know if we're at that point yet. Uh, I, I, do you have an interest in uh, serving as chair? Um, I'm pretty happy with your leadership. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm going to give Ian a pass here because I want to let him get his feet wet first before we push him for it. So, uh. I was just going to say that it's been long time tradition that first time meeting commissioners uh, that happen to have a first meeting of January automatically assume the role. But John, I guess we'll go with your bit. All right. No, no, we can, we, we can you know, I'm, I'm just afraid he wouldn't come back in February. So <laughs> I think the bylaws say I can't, right? <laughs> oh, somebody read the bylaws. That is he pays attention. That's good. Um, yeah, I would just say from a staff perspective, I mean, I'm happy, uh, and Luke, I, not to speak for Luke, but we're happy to work with anybody who's willing to play the role. And we try to make it as, uh, as easy as we can, uh, with the exception of once the meetings are rolling, uh, 
that's the nature of the meeting. But, you know, as far as outside of meeting work goes, there's really not a lot of, uh, we try to, we try to take, do the heavy lifting as best we can. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I could muddle through another year. I do want to be around here to walk into a new maintenance facility. And, uh, you know, I, I, that'll be a, a, a proud moment for Marinwood. But uh, I, I certainly don't want to uh, hold anyone back. I would I would love to nominate you for another year if that's who, uh, if do you need a nomination, Eric? Uh, yeah, I mean you can certainly you know it's a it's a designation by the commission, okay. so I I think a, a motion and a second and a vote would be in order. Uh, however, it works. A motion that John Toon uh, that I nominate John Toon for a, an additional year of chair. Second. <laughs> I also want to, uh, I, I think there's a, I think, John, you're serving as the vice chair right now, aren't you? Oh, uh, am I? You, uh, yeah, you better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do you want a shot at the vice? Sure. <laughs> we can switch All that right. <laughs> so, and you're willing to take up the uh, position of vice chair. Okay. Yeah. So when I kick over next week, here it's all on you then. <laughs> Better not, man. <laughs> can uh, I, can we get a, a just a formal motion from somebody uh, that can include the chair and the vice in one motion? Right. Yeah. If you could restate your motion, John Toon. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that John Toon um, resume or retain his position as chair, and Anne. Uh, you're gonna have to help me with your last name. Like possum, shawsome. Shawsome, um, assume the role of vice chair. Second the motion. All right, uh, motion by Campo, second by Fine. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, motion carries. All right. Thank you. Um, do we need uh, public comment on this item? Um, you, you don't have any at this point on this, so I think uh, you've requested it. All right, then uh, if there's nothing further, we will ask for uh, item number nine, uh, items of interest, request for future agenda items from commission. We have a, an update on the maintenance project next meeting. Sure. Okay. Eric, yeah, I have, I don't know, I'm kind of interested in hearing about, I, I think it's called the Valley Stone Trail. Um, th that's the one that, right, that the end that follows along the creek? Eric? Yeah, yeah, I was waiting to see if Luke was going to chime in. It's it's more commonly referred to as the Blackstone Trail. But it it's is Valley Stone. Valley Stone Drive, and it's the one that we also dedicated to Tom Horn. When right, he yeah, there. right. So there's the sign there that's the Horn Trail as well. Right. I I don't, I'm, you know, we've never really talked about that here. Um, I'm kind of curious if there could be a report on that trail or some kind of I don't know. I'm curious what kind of maintenance goes in, into that, what the use of it. I, I hike it frequently and I've noticed um, biking seems to be coming, has become an issue over there. Um, I, that doesn't necessarily have to be an agenda item. It could be, I could talk to you offline about it. Um, but I kind of, I guess, wanted to put it out there that I have some yeah. interest in that. Uh, John, we definitely could talk about that. We've that's that's been a re, there's been um, some recurring themes out there for for maintenance that we've had to deal with, and I've touched on it a few times over the in some of my reports. But I'd be happy to to talk to you about that, or um, you know, give it a little update in my report next month. Um, you know, just kind of what we've been working on. I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and that brings up a good point. I don't mean to put anything extra on Luke, especially for getting in that was about to be a bitter time. Maybe in the next month or two, we, we can even put together just a little something on that and make it a, you know, just an informational agenda item. 
um, kind of in the spirit of some of the other, you know, uh, facility areas that we've talked about in the past. Um, just to kind of go through that, if, uh, if uh, again, I, you know, I, I should have probably talked to Luke about this offline <laughs> because, you no, know, that's, that's I, totally I awesome. think it would be interesting and it, it's definitely one of the more, you know, as far as trails go, uh, you know, true actual open space trails within Marinwood, it's, you know, it's the most popular. Uh, and uh, it's definitely seen an influx of biking. Uh, some renegade uh, built this Ponte Ridge Trail up along the line up there. And so we get all sorts of bikers coming down from that. <laughs> I, I know it. <laughs> I, I've seen them. Yeah, no, I think that's a good topic, uh, John. Actually, and uh, I, Luke, I'll help you with that. Uh, however, oh, much yeah, you no, can. no, no worries at all. That'd be uh, that'd be no problem. Great, thank you. Hey, well, if there's nothing else, yeah, public. You say we have public comments. Public, yeah. Yes, Stephen. Um, yes, I am. Yeah. Well, then again, uh, I'll move to item number 10. Uh, before we adjourn, again, I want to thank Ian Fine for joining our group. It's much appreciated. And Lisa, we appreciate you sitting in a director's chair for us. The, the uh, community of needs people like you. Other than that, if there's nothing else, I'll uh, adjourn the meeting. Do you need a motion to adjourn or we're good? Uh, you don't necessarily need a motion, but you can oh, make one. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> all right, all right. All in favor? Uh, good night. See. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thanks, all.